guys. It's great to see you again. I'm Michelle Lee and I'll be your visual artist for this lesson. Today we're going to talk about prairie dogs and their prairie habitat. And we're going to do an art project about this. What we're going to need for today is a sheet of paper, pencil, eraser, and a cup of crayons. There are five species of prairie dogs. They are members of the squirrel family. And prairie dogs will uh, often kill squirrels because they feel threatened and in competition with them. Prairie dogs measure about 12 to 16 inches long and weigh between one to three pounds. They are brownish tan in color and have small short tails. They also have other relatives like groundhogs, chipmunks, marmots, and woodchucks. Prairie dogs are very social. They groom each other like monkeys and the young like to play fight. At the center of life is their close-knit family structure. Each group is ruled by a dominant male. The family groups or towns have a one to two males with several females and the young are called pups. Males may jump from one family group to another family group, but the females stick together for life. Prairie dog females usually have um, three to eight pups each litter, but usually only half survive their first year. Prairie dogs eat a variety of seeds, they stems, roots, grasses, weeds, and the flowering plants and insects. They are fast, skilled fighters, armed with sharp claws and powerful teeth. Prairie dogs don't hibernate, but in the winter, weather is extremely cold, or when it's snowy, they sleep and stay in their burrows for a few days. Prairie dogs are intelligent animals with complex communication. They have a very advanced language system. Each sound or squeak has a specific meaning. Scientists have decoded the prairie dog vocabulary and their language is more advanced than any other animal that they've found. To the human ear, prairie dog squeaky uh, calls sound simple and repetitive. But recent research has found the calls convey incredible descriptive details. They can not only alert others um, a human is approaching their burrow, but they can also elaborate the human is tall and wearing the color blue. They act together to ensure each other's safety by warning each other while some prairie dogs are foraging and looking for plants to eat. Um, a few prairie dogs will be uh, will become outlooks and watch for predators. Prairie dogs live in underground burrows which have complex tunnels of interconnecting burrows. They have specific areas for nurseries, sleeping, toilets, and even listening spots near the exits. The tunnels are arranged to allow air to flow through them, providing ventilation. Their home tunnels are built at an angle to prevent flooding. In case water does fill the burrow, the animals have constructed a room above to act as an air pocket. The prairie dog can wait for the water to go down in this additional room. Prairie dog habitats are traditionally dry, flat, thinly vegetated grasslands. The prairie dog prefers a fine and medium textured soil, as uh, these work best for building underground burrows. Like beavers, the black-tailed prairie dog um, are habitat uh, modifiers who will dig burrows close together, underground tunnels forming colonies also called towns. 
Prairie dogs prefer to create their homes in overglazed areas, so the low vegetation can provide protection from predators. Prairie dogs are very important to the grasslands, our prairies across central and the western United States. They make a great shelter for jackrabbits, toads, and rattlesnakes. The bare patches of ground created by their grazing and burrowing attract certain insects that feed a variety of birds. In addition to providing food and shelter for other species, prairie dog tunnels and burrows uh, for their underground colonies or towns actually enrich the soil and improve vegetation quality because the water is able to flow underground. Prairie dogs are an important food source for many predators, like badgers, coyotes, foxes, bobcats, golden eagles, and many hawks, and the endangered black-footed ferrets. They are very important in the extended stages of the food chain. Say they eat grass, and then a, they're eaten by a predator, like a snake, and then the snake ends up the prey for a, a golden eagle. Prairie dog living territory range has shrunk by more than 95%. There used to be hundreds of million, millions of prairie dogs in North America. The European settlers traveled through the West wrote about passing through massive prairie dog colonies some of which extended for miles. But over time, their range has shrunk to less than 5% of its original territory due to the host of uh, pressures, including habitat uh, encroachment by humans, meaning uh, people um, moving to the areas and taking up the space for the prairie dog. Prairie dogs are threatened by the bubonic plague, the same plague that caused the Black Death in Europe in the late 1800s. This disease entered North America by the rats aboard the European ships, and it quickly spread through the prairie dog population in the northern Great Plains. The disease is still spreading in large tracts and tends to wipe out entire prairie dog colonies when it strikes. So we're doing our prairie dogs and make sure you have your uh, name. I'm going to do my name in pencil and then I'll write it with a um, black marker. I'll be drawing it with a black marker. We're doing the prairie dogs on the prairie. Um, the first thing we're going to think of, let me go ahead and kind of ghost it real quick, is here's going to be a area where we're going to have our prairie dog, basically, okay? You can see that part, I'm, and I'm going to go ahead and draw it from here. Now, our head area is almost like a football on the top, so here's my, my, my football. Kind of, kind of like shape. You see my football shape coming here. All right, um, and then um, he's gonna have arms that come down, arms that kind of come down, and then we'll have uh, a body. See how it kind of fits inside that, and you can erase yours afterwards, or just don't uh, do it and just use your black marker. Okay, we're gonna have some little legs that come come here. Well, let's see. It's our little feet and the underneath. All right, and this is gonna be our arms on one side and another arm coming on the other side. And again, well, like a little zigzag or for the little fingers. Marie does have claws. They're really sharp claws. 
Okay, uh, I am going to go ahead and put his mouth coming open like this. And they do have teeth. Uh, it's kind of uh, like the rabbit has buck teeth in the front. There's our, and a beaver has teeth in the front. There's a, he's a rodent, right? And that's his little nose. I'm going to put a couple of whiskers here. Maybe three on this side. Um, our eye is going to be around here. I'm going to go ahead and put him an eye around. And I'm going to go ahead and color in the part of it. There we go. We have like a little C for the ear. Maybe I'll put a couple of hairs that come out there. I'm going to put him on the prairie. Here he is on the prairie. Actually, he's going to be going into a hole. Let's put him in uh, going into a hole. He's got some... Uh, waves of the dirt and the soil. He's already dug up a few things, right? That's his little house, his little home. Uh, he's got his hole here in a couple of areas where, and I'm gonna go ahead and color it darker here. I'm gonna put some blades of uh, grass here. And a few blades of grass, a couple of rocks. Let's see, I'm gonna bring this all the way off. Maybe that's coming off behind the rock. I'm gonna bring it all the way behind the rock. Let's see, and maybe his little belly. He's got a fat belly. All right. Now, I'm gonna say he's gonna have a friend in the very distance. Let me go ahead, I'm gonna put like a great big oval He's really far in the distance, so that great big oval looks really small. And uh, let's see, I'm going to come around, give him kind of like a little body. Well, I'm going to put a couple of eyes. That's what I'm going to do. Put my oval and two eyes and a little curve, and then come around it underneath. And put two little round areas, or should I say oval areas for feet. And here we go. He's going to be looking straight at us. Put our little triangular looking nose, almost like you know, a, a cat or a dog would have. There we go. And give him a chin. This one might have a double chin. How's that? And here's my little claws. Of course, you can't see them from far. And let me see. I'm going to go ahead and put it. There's going to be a hole behind him. That's where he's going to be coming out of. So there he goes. This is my picture drawn. Now I'm going to have to color him up. Now you can erase this if you like or just leave it there. Or when you're tracing it over, just do it with black. Now you don't have to trace over with black now. You can wait towards the end when you're coloring with the black. And uh, this will be brown. The prairie dog does, I'm, I'm, I'm only gonna use the side here. I'm just gonna give it a little color. The hole itself, I'll go ahead and put black. Most of this will be greens, some dirt, some ground. See my hole will be black. I'm gonna put that with black. Of course, I don't have to color it all the way in yet either. I am going to have some um, areas with my peach color, maybe um, my belly area and my chest area. The chest and the belly will be in the peachy colors with yellow. I like to mix them both in, so it's going to be peach and yellowish because it's going to be lighter. That's the only reason I really use the, the, the yellow. My white won't show as well right now. Oh, I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and give my little one over here a little color back here. A little spot back here for his belly area. And then this over here, I might put in the little yellow and the peach color. And of course around the face. So here's my peach. I'll mix some color. It's no problem to mix colors. 
You can always mix colors. You can always mix colors. Here's my coloring here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put some areas where, eh, who knows, you might, uh, his neck, his, he's kind of rounded, so right here would be maybe a little darker. Maybe underneath his chin, it might be a little darker. Under his arms, it might be a little darker, you know, like a little shadow. Might be a little darker here. Oh, I forgot to put him a tail. You believe that? Now, he is a black tail. So I'm going to just put, there you go, and he's a black tail. So I'm going to put a little black on the end, and the rest I'm going to put with browns. And I'll color it up brown. It's behind him, so I'm going to go ahead and color it brown. Now most of the other stuff out here will be in the greens. Most of this will be in the greens. Now I only put in a little color here so that you'll see it. I'll be adding some of these. I'm going to come back with some of these crayons here and do stuff like these. All right. And I'll put some in the yellow because it might be the sun shining on the prairie, right? And that's some rocks, so I'll put my rocks in the brown. Again, I'll put some browns on my prairie dog in the distance. And this will be dirt back here. And I'll use some peach in the back. Uh, and I'm going to also use some orange. I also like to use a little orange because it does look like he's, he's a little orangey. So here's my little orange in there. Give a little orange color. A little orange color. Kind of gives it a little rusty look with the browns. And then I'm, oh, I forgot to put him, let me put him some eyebrows. I like to put eyebrows. So that's my little fellow, and I'll come back and add that with brown. And I did, did put that little dark. And may, maybe um, you can use gray a lot if you have gray. Add that on your shadowing areas to give it a little look. And keep adding color and color and color. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some, go some gray in here. And I can also do that with black. It'll make it look like um, some of the dirt and rocks as we're, we're going. Dirt and the rocks. And I'll come back and add more. See, I'm going to come back, like I said, afterwards, and I'm going to color all this area in with the green crayon. See, yeah, I, I don't always use the very top of the crayon. Sometimes I use the side. That's how come I usually keep my little broken pieces. My broken pieces I use over and over and over. See, I'll eventually take the crayon clothes off and, and use it. So some areas where I want little light to show. I'll put some of that there. Maybe his cheeks are a little lighter. And I'll come back with the browns and the tans. And I'll just keep coloring him over and over and over with these colors and mixing the colors where I think I want him to be, to be colored that color. And like I said, I'm going to mix orange in here too and blend the colors in. Crayons don't really blend very well, but you can get them to blend. It's not like an oil pastel. Oil pastels will blend in a lot easier. And of course, chalk pastels will too. But you can still use the, the crayon around the feet. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with some grays around the claws. I'll put some gray colors. 
the native tall grass prairie is the most endangered ecosystem in North America. In one acre of established prairie, there is an average of 24,000 pounds of roots. When prairie roots die, they decompose to form organic matter. Prairie soil is fertile soil. Natural competition by prairie plants reduce the occurrence of weeds. And I'll mix a few colors here and there. There we go. So our prairie dog and orange, remember I like my orange on him. Our prairie dog likes to live in the prairie. Okay, of course that's the name prairie dog, but he um, it helps the area. He helps the area a lot by what he, the holes that he puts. Um, some animals use it as shelter and um, others, um, they like to eat the poor prairie dog. It must have been a sight when that, those first settlers came, when they could see miles and miles and miles of prairie dog. They don't have that much anymore on our poor prairie dogs. I'm gonna give this one a little bit on that too as well. Little bit on him. Remember the prairie dogs, they live in the underground burrows and they have a complex tunnels uh, that's interconnecting the tunnels, a burrow. The prairie dog um, is a highly social, means he likes to talk a lot with others, huh? It lives in large groups called towns. Large groups called towns and the prairie dog uh, acts together uh, to ensure everybody's safety of the whole group. Of the whole group. And they're very, very, very intelligent animals because they have a very complex um, language and patterns that they come up with and they, they let e each other know what's happening in the area. Now out here, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, draw a few um, grass blades. I'd just like to go, let me show you in the dark green. I, I've kind of put them together, almost like I just find little spaces and I keep adding, I keep adding all around because he's, he's in the prairie, he's on the prairie. Now they like to live in the, shall, uh, not shallow, but the shorter grass areas where they can see a predator approaching from far. And their little cave, they're not little caves, but their little tunnels underneath, they have a, a space, a little spot for everything. They have a spot for one of them to stay right there by the edge and watch out for a predator. And they will sound off and let everybody know that a predator's there. So just keep going and put some little grass, little grass blades of grass. And I'll come back with the lighter green and do the exact same thing. Remember, you may not finish, and then again, you might finish this one. I won't be finished. It would take me a little while. I like to mix my colors and my blades of grass. It, and it really doesn't matter how you do in the grass because does the grass really just lay there straight? No. The grass is like all over the place and you keep adding little specks of grass blades growing up all around. All around. Now some of them will be in this color too. I will come back with 
my green. And then after I finish with this, I'll come back with my green and, and my darker green, and I'll do the same thing around my darker green. And again, I'll work on the dirt some more. I'm going to put a lot of browns in this. I will put a lot of browns. I'll come back here and add more browns on the area. Now underneath him, let's say if the sun was coming straight down, I might put this a little darker. And then again, uh, the, the sun might be all over. Maybe the sun's from the front and we don't even see. We could have a shadow in the back. This is what mine looks like as we go. See how I put the darker areas here? And some areas be, might be highlighted. It could be kind of sandy looking. It could be kind of just dusty looking, okay? I would come back over here and add more colors of greens in the ground. I, do, I did take a brown and, and brought it around with all of this in here too as well. All the colors. Oops, excuse me. I shut my camera. I moved the camera. And uh, I'll give him some more yellow in his body. He's a golden color, tan golden color actually. But I could use my creative thoughts too as well. And I, when I come back, I will come back over all of this and color it. Uh, see, before I use it really light and then I put it darker. I use it darker on the areas once I have the colors I want. I'll use the, the lighter color over it darker to kind of blend everything in together. But now you don't have to try to break your crayon either. Like I've said before, if you get a chance Send me some of these pictures on Facebook. I'd love to see what y'all are doing in the classroom. Our Pace videos, we'd love to see them. And I will color it up till there's no white left over except for the whites of his eyes or if there's supposed to be something in there that's supposed to have the white. I will color it up. and keep adding color. Oh, see, I was working on this one. I can come back and work on my other one. So your job will be to finish it up, keep adding and adding to it, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have, learning about the prairie dogs on the prairie. Take a moment and view your artwork. Turn and look at your neighbor's artwork. Notice the similarities and the differences between the two. Thanks for joining me today. We learned so many things. We talked about the prairie dogs and their prairie habitat. And we also created an artwork about them. As you go through your week, Notice the different habitats uh, you may see. And uh, think about the animals that you may see in the habitats. Enjoy the rest of your day. I can't wait to see you next time.